Welcome. Chapter 11. This is actually the second um, to last chapter that we're going to do. We only really have about two weeks of school left. Kind of exciting. Kind of freaky. Missing you guys a ton. Um, hopefully we get to start back at school next year like normal. But um, this next section is all about applications of derivatives. Why do we do the derivatives? How is it used? Actually, the next two um, sections are applications of the derivatives. Well, the first um, thing that we use the derivative for is for the slope of the tangent line. So when we talk about first derivative, we mean slope of the tangent line. And if my directions ask me to find the slope of the of a function at a given value, that means I need to find the first derivative. If it says find the derivative, obviously I'm finding the slope of the tangent line. If it says differentiate, I'm doing the first derivative. And so on these, because we learned all those shortcuts from here on out, we can use the shortcuts. And kind of what's nice is that we can also, we don't have to simplify them because we're going to be finding a value. So we'll just plug in a point after we find the derivative to get the slope that we're looking for. Then this is going to bring us into writing the actual equation of the tangent line. So we're going to talk about two different forms, the point-slope form and slope-intercept form. I think you guys are probably pretty familiar with slope-intercept form. So let's get going. A couple things that I want to do in this video is talk about um, different, different situations that might occur as well as review the shortcuts. Um, I'm going to jump right in. Uh, right away into the first one. When you look at this function, it looks like it um, is a quotient. Uh, it's a rational function. But it can also be written as um, a function with a power. And um, that's this is an option that's out there. I just want to show this to you. If, if you feel like, no, I really like doing the quotient rule to find my derivative, um, that's great. You can go ahead and do that. But um, this is an option that's out there as long as the number on top is just a constant. So what I like to do is... I will take that bottom and I will make that quantity a first power because there is one of them and that's what a power means. I have one quantity of x squared minus 9 in the denominator. And then I'm going to go ahead and um, rewrite that as f of x equals 3 times x squared minus 9 to the negative first power because if I bring that first power up on top, then I make the power negative on it. And now this allows me to do the chain rule instead of the quotient rule. And so when I do my derivative f prime of x, remember how the chain rule works. I multiply the power down in front, so that's negative 3, negative 1 times 3. Leave the inner as is and lower the power 1. Then I'm going to multiply by the derivative of the inside. That's how our chain rule works. And now because we're finding the actual slope at a given value, I can go ahead and plug 1 in there. So f prime of 1 is negative 3 times 1 squared minus 9 raised to the negative second power um, times 2 times 1. Okay, so this is something else I want to address when you see this. As I work through, um, this negative power is going to bring this piece, this um, value that I get when I do the, um, the derivative of this on the bottom and make it positive. So what this ends up being is negative 3 times 1 over negative 8 squared because 1 squared minus 9, negative 8, bring it down on the bottom, make it positive, times 2. And then from here, I can just go ahead and do my math. I'm going to do negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. I'll do negative 8 squared, 64. Reduce that. I end up dividing top and bottom by 2 with negative 3 over 32. So there is my slope of my tangent line. So again, a little bit different approach to this derivative. If you prefer to go and do the quotient rule, um, again, go ahead and do it that way. But I just want to show you that as an option. Um, I prefer this method. I think it works nice. So uh, for number two, I just want you to pause the video and see if you can do it. It's just a basic power rule. Um, so you're going to do your first derivative, power rule, and then plug your three in at the end. Again, pause the video. And um, when you're ready, come back and take a look. 
Um, welcome back. Your derivative should have been 3x squared minus 8x. The derivative of 7 is 0, so that's my first derivative here. When you do f prime of 3 and plug that in, you should have ended up with 3 as your slope of your tangent line. That would be 3 times 3 squared minus 8 times 3, or 27 minus 24. Uh, so pretty straightforward when you have a polynomial. I always like seeing the polynomial. It gets a little more difficult when you have to do one of the other, the chain, the quotient, the product. Um, trig, remember those involve chain, but we'll work through these. <clears throat> uh, again, at any point if you want, you can pause, try it on your own, and then come back and check the answer as you go. But I'm going to jump into a review here of the uh, product rule. Product rule says you do the, for f prime of x, I will do the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. That's the general rule for it. So when I'm doing f prime of x here, remember you used u and v. u just represents the polynomial of x. v represents another polynomial of x. So I'm going to do negative x squared plus 5 times the derivative of the second, 3x squared plus 6x plus x cubed plus 3x squared minus 2 times derivative of first, negative 2x. And then to find my slope, I plug 3 in and just work through and do the math. You um, just remember that when you plug the 3 in, the negative here is in front of that x squared, so that's not squared. That's going to remain negative. You're not going to square that out. That's a common mistake people make. So then this is 3 times 3 squared plus 6 times 3 plus 3 cubed plus 3 times 3 squared minus 2 and negative 2 times 3. When all is said and done, if you do this correctly, you should end up with negative 492. Again, I'm not here to show you how to do the math. Um, that you can plug in your calculator or do it however you need to do it. Uh, but we're just making sure that we can do the derivative properly and then plug a value in properly. I expanded a, that out a little bit far into my problem number four area, so I'm just going to move over here a little bit to do problem number four. Number four involves a uh, trig rule, and remember we drew those graphs. We're going to draw graphs again um, early next week when we are going to be graphing a derivative from a given function. But we drew those graphs just so we could figure out what the derivative of sine was. And the derivative of sine is cosine, but I do have to do the chain rule for that. So f prime of x here becomes the, move that over so you guys can see, derivative of sine is cosine, leave the angle as is, times the derivative of the angle. So it's cosine 3x times 3, or if you write it in the proper order, 3 times cosine 3x. Don't be bothered by this. We've done this before. We've used pi. We found the cosine of pi. We found the sine of pi. We can do that again here. So f prime of pi just means I replace x with pi. So this is the cosine of 3 pi times 3. Well, 3 pi, remember where that is? 0, 1, 2, here's 3 pi over here. That's the point negative 1, 0. The cosine is negative 1. So f prime of pi is equal to negative 1 times 3 or negative 3. And that becomes my slope of my tangent. Again, don't be bothered by that trig stuff. We've done it a lot. We've done it a ton, OK? So it's out there. Now, um. I don't know what crazy person made these notes for you. Um, I do know it was me. But for whatever reason, I jump into an equation of a tangent line, and then I go back into on the other side um, problems where I'm just finding the slope at a given value, and then I jump back into equation of a tangent line. So I'm going to um, jump. We're going to come back to 5 and 6 shortly. Flip your paper over, and let's take a look at 7 and 8, just continuing on with what we're doing where we find our derivative and plug our value in, okay? So um, I like to show these because 
they involve the chain rule, first of all, but they're also going to involve simplifying with um, some rational powers. And um, some people have great calculators that you can just plug that stuff in and you get it. Other people don't. And so I want to talk through how we're going to simplify these when we go through. So again, we're going to find our derivative. Some people write this as y prime, but um, really the proper way is dy dx. And so dy dx is the represented, representation for the derivative of this function of y with respect to x. I'm going to do the chain rule, 1 third times 2x minus 4, lower the power 1. That gives me negative 2 thirds power, times the derivative of the inside, which is 2. Now, to evaluate that at negative 2, again, that means I plug negative 2 in for x. So dy dx at x equal negative 2 would be 1 third times negative 4. I'm just going to do that math right away. 2 times negative 2, not a toughie, minus 4 to the negative 2 thirds power times 2. Now, this is what I want to address, this negative 2 thirds power, because the negative is going to bring whatever value I get here, which is going to be negative 8. It's going to bring that down to the denominator of this as I evaluate it. And then the 2 thirds is going to make a root to a power. So it's going to be the cube root of negative 8 squared, or it will be negative 8 squared, or sorry, um, yeah, I, okay, so negative, I don't know if you can hear the difference in my tone. So the cube root of negative 8 squared, or the cube root of negative 8 squared. Uh, does that make sense? I can take, I can square first and then take the cube root, or I can um, take the cube root, cube root first and then square the answer. Uh, which, the way you do it does not matter at all. It's kind of personal. You can decide what you want. Um, on different problems, I will square it first and then take the cube root. On other problems, I will take the cube root first and then square it. Again, I, I know I don't mean to be confusing, but that what you do or how you do that doesn't matter. Um, the order. I just do whichever seems easiest. Okay, so this becomes one third times one over the cube root of negative eight, and I'm going to do it this way, squared the cube root of negative 8 squared, and then times 2 over 1. So those are my pieces that I have here. So the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2, and then negative 2 squared will give me 4. So I have 1 third times 1 fourth times 2 over 1, and then when I do all of my simplifying on that, I should end up with 1 sixth. Oh, this should be negative 2, shouldn't it be? Um, wait, let me back this up. So this is times 2, times 2, um, and negative, negative 2 squared, that one's going to go out. So, no, I, I'm wrong, I guess. I, I don't know, for some reason I thought I missed a negative in there. So 1 sixth is our final answer there. All right? Um, a little bit weird, but again, you can kind of talk yourself through it. Why don't you try the derivative of 8, and then again, when you're done, t you know, um, pause the video, and then when you're done, turn it back on and double check. Um, dy dx, hopefully I can say welcome back to you here, would be 2 thirds times 2x plus 4 to the negative 1 third, which is going to equate to a cube root in the denominator, um, and then times the derivative of the inside, which is 2. Now I have to evaluate dy dx at x equal negative 1. That is 2 thirds times negative 2 plus 4 to the negative 1 third power times 2. Remember what that third power does. It makes a cube root in the denominator, so this is going to be 2 thirds times 1 over 2 to the 1 third, make it positive in, in the denominator, times 2, or 2 thirds times 
1 over the cube root of 2 times 2. Okay, so <clears throat> at this point now, I'll do the 2 times that I have 4 thirds times, actually, let's write it as this, 4 over 3 times the cube root of 2. That's better. Okay, so now I want to rationalize that denominator. And we've rationalized the denominator in the past with a square root. And all I had to do was multiply the top and the bottom by whatever was the square root of whatever was there. And that would get rid of that radical. Well, it's different for a cube root because when you talk about a cube root, that means I need three like things in order to get rid of that cube root. So what I need is two more twos. I have one two there. I need two more twos to get a, a perfect cube. And so I'll multiply the top and the bottom by the cube root of 2 squared. I probably should have written that in a different color so it stands out. Um, again, I'm multiplying the top and the bottom by the cube root of 2 squared because I need two more twos to get rid of that cube root, cube root of 2 squared. So when I am done, I have... 4 times the cube root of 2 squared, which is 4, over 3 times 2, because that's what this thing is going to end up being, that 2 there. And then I can cancel the 2 on the top and the bottom, and my final answer that I have here is 2 times the cube root of 4 all over 3. Okay. Again, the reason, let me move that over again so you can see it, 2 times the cube root of 4 over 3. The reason that I wanted to do problems like these, to push problems like these, is because I know that for some people this is uncomfortable, unfamiliar. It's not something we see often, and I want to make sure that you are exposed to it. Again, if you have a great calculator that you're able to use, you are always welcome to use that as an option. Okay? So let's go back to the previous page, and we're going to finish those last two problems on the previous page, and those are taking it one step further. I am going to be writing the equation of the tangent line. And there are different forms of an equation of a, of a line. We have standard form, we have slope-intercept form, we have point-slope form. This particular problem is asking us to put it in point-slope for, point form. This may not be familiar to you, to a lot of you, but it is y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. It is called point-slope form because you need a point, that's the x1, y1, and the slope. And then you just put it in. It looks complicated, but it's a super easy way to use a formula or a super easy form to use. It's very straightforward. So in this case, I have x1, y1. I have the point that I need. And now I need to find the slope. And the slope is the first derivative. So I'm going to go through here, and I'm going to do the first derivative um, at x equals negative 1 at the x I'm interested in, that it's the x of the, the x coordinate in the, in the point. Now, in problem number 1, I did that trick where I brought this up to the top. And like I had mentioned to you, that works really well if the number on top is a constant or just a number. And in this case, I have a variable on top. So that method, if I do that, I can still do it, but I'm going to end up with a product chain rule combination. And it gets kind of complicated, especially when you're new with derivatives. So we're just going to do a basic quotient rule for this one. So the quotient rule, remember, is I write oops, f prime. I'm going to write the denominator as is times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator as is times the derivative of the denominator all over the denominator squared. And then I need to evaluate this at negative 1. So again, that means I'm going to be putting in um, negative 1 for x. So 3 times negative 1 minus 3 times 2 times negative 1 minus negative 1 squared times 3 all over 3 times negative 1 minus 3 squared. Again, this is not 
the time for me to be teaching you how to do all these calculations that you um, should be able to figure out on your own if you do this correctly it comes out to be 9 36 which reduces down to 1 fourth so this is my first derivative at negative 1 this is my slope but now I have to just put my slope and my point in this equation and so it is y minus y1 equals slope times x minus x1. Just keep in mind that minus a negative becomes a positive, and so that's why I wrote those in that form. Okay? So again, pretty straightforward. It looks complicated, but it really isn't that complicated. It's just a matter of finding your slope and then using the slope and the point to write your equation. So again, this would be a great time for you to pause the video and give number six a try and then come back and take a look at it when you're done. It has another one of those rational powers so you can kind of work your hand at that one. So f prime of x is one half times negative two x plus two raised to the negative one half power times the derivative of the inside which is negative two. This is the x I'm interested in, so I'm going to find f prime of x, I'm sorry, f prime of negative 1. And so that is 1 half times negative 1 times negative 2, which is 2 plus 2 to the negative 1 half power times negative 2. Okay. And so then I will just go ahead and evaluate that. This is going to be 1 half times 1 over the square root of 4, because remember that half is a square root, the negative puts it on the bottom, times negative 2 over 1. And when all is said and done here, I should end up with negative 1 half if done correctly. Um, double checking and making sure. So that would be one half, one fourth, negative two, cancel. Yep, so negative one half. Now I can go back and use the point that I have here and plug it in the form. Y minus Y1 is equal to the slope times X minus X1. And there is my final answer in point slope form. Okay, so now let's jump to the last two because the last two asks for us to write our linear answer in a different form. They want it in slope-intercept form. And slope-intercept form is a form that most of us are pretty familiar with. Maybe not when I say it, but when I write it, you're going to be like, oh yeah, y equals mx plus b is slope-intercept form. It gives the slope and the y-intercept. Now there are a couple different approaches, and again, whoever you had for an algebra or algebra 2 teacher might have given you a way to do this, but I always think the easiest approach to getting this form is to use the point-slope form that we used on the previous page. So I'm going to get my answer, plug it into point-slope form, and then move it around, manipulate it until I get it into y equals mx plus b form. So I'll have to do some distributing and some um, getting stuff away from the y, so some sort of basic solving for y. Um, you may notice also that in this problem they only give us an x value. And in order for me to do this, get this linear equation, I'm going to need a point, which means I'm going to need a y value. So I have two things that I have to do here. I have to, one, find the slope, which comes from the first derivative, and two, find the point which comes from the y value when my input is whatever the given x is, in this case 1. So it doesn't matter the order that I do this, I just have to be able to find these two things. I'll start with the order that I wrote here, and that is find the slope first. So my derivative dy dx, some people again write that as y prime, dy dx is the proper way to write it. This is negative 1 half times 3x plus 6 to the negative 1 half power times 3, just applying the chain rule. Then I'm going to evaluate this dy dx at x equals 1 because that's what I'm given, so that's negative 1 half 
times 3 plus 6 to the negative 1 half times 3. Keep in mind what this means. This is negative 1 half. 3 plus 6 here is 9, so this is times 1 over the square root of 9, because um, the 1 half is the square root. The negative puts it in the denominator, times 3. So this is going to be 1 over 3. These are going to cancel each other out. We end up with a slope of negative 1 half. So I've got the slope. This is the m part of it. That's the slope that I'm going to use. Now I need to find the point. Again, the point comes from the y value when x is 1. So I just have to evaluate this function. I just have to evaluate this, fi find y when x is 1. And so I'll plug it into the original. This is the opposite of 3 times 1 plus 6 raised to the 1 half power. So this is the opposite of 9 raised to the 1 half power, which is the opposite of the square root of 9, which is negative 3. So the point that I will use is when I input 1, I got an output of negative 3. So now here is my point. I'm going to go ahead and plug that into point slope form first and then readjust it to get the slope intercept form. So it's y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. And now I'll distribute y plus 3 equals negative 1 half x plus 1 half. And I'll subtract 3 from both sides. So y equals negative 1 half x. I always do that to you, sorry. y equals negative, I'm subtracting 3 on both sides, negative 1 half x minus 5 halves. And so there is my slope intercept form of the equation. Okay, one more. This one brings back some trig. Uh, don't be afraid of the trig. Um, again, we're going to follow the same steps that we did, and hopefully you're feeling a little bit more comfortable with um, finding the derivatives of the trig and, and then evaluating trig functions. But again, I have to follow that same procedure. I need to find the slope, and I need to find the point, because I'm only given the x value. So my derivative, dy dx, is the derivative of sine is cosine angle as is, times the derivative of the angle. And then I will evaluate that at pi. So I'm going to do dy dx at x equals pi. And so that's the cosine of 2 pi times 2. Well, 2 pi is 0, pi, or, yeah, 0, 1, 2, so right here. So that's 1, 0. And so that is equal to 1 times 2 or 2. So here is my slope. Found my slope. Now I need to find my point. So slope found. Next, find the point. The point is me evaluating y at x equal pi. So in the original function, so I'm going to do equals the sine of 2 pi. Well, up here we already figured out that 2 pi is this point here, 1, 0. So the sine is 0. So this is 0. So the point that I'm going to use is pi. A little weird, but it's OK, comma 0. So here's the point. Now I can go ahead and put it into point slope form. And then I'll take it to slope intercept form. So point slope form, sorry for the moving around here again, but this is y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. And then the 0, I like that because I don't have to do anything with it. I just have to distribute this through 2x minus 2 pi. Even though that looks funny, this is the equation in slope-intercept form. That tells me that the y-intercept is a little bit below negative 6, about negative 6.28-ish is where it's going to cross the y-axis. So um, just finding the slopes of the tangent and then equations of the tangent lines. As always, if you have any questions, make sure you contact one of us teachers. And um, as always, I say to you, have a great day. And uh, in fact, have a great weekend.